Hi everyone, Joe for Jaspi's CaseBreaks.com. Here with uh, here with you on a Sunday, and about to do some Ben Baller right here. Big thanks to everybody who bought their team straight up on a Sunday. This is a full case, twelve boxes. Pick your team number five. All cards ship. Sal with Last Bot Mojo Mets, and there's everybody else right there. All right, so a lot of uh, a lot of fun parallels, and uh, just a. Nice little design for this uh, Ben Baller stuff. Thanks everybody for getting in. Oh, there's my knife right here. And if you're a fan of this stuff, we just, and if you're watching live, we just loaded up another case. If you want to get after it. If you're, if you're watching in the future, I would go check out the baseball section, jazbeescasebreaks.com. Anyway, who knows, who knows what kind of stuff we, uh, who knows what kind of stuff we have there. And uh, personal breaks on Instagram. At Jaspies Breaks also has some personal box of this available as well. All right, so let's slide this over here. Did I hear about the two Julio Red autos that Jason pulled yesterday? No, I did not. Although I did, I did look in our Slack channel here and I do see it. Wow, that's pretty awesome. That's pretty nice. Well, maybe we can pull something like that in here. Nancy saying, call me stupid, but I'm not sure what the Ben Baller is all about. Well, I'll tell you what. Ben Baller is... Uh, According to his Instagram profile, a father and husband first, a two-time GIA Jeweler of the Year. Also plays some golf, 2023 Farmers PJ Pro-Am champion. Done a little bit of acting, done some podcasting, done all sorts of things. He's a he's an LA guy. I think he went to went to uh, did he go to USC at this point? But yeah, I think he's best known for to as a jeweler to the stars, athletes and celebrities. And then he's branched out to a bunch of other stuff and I think has a relatively popular podcast and Yeah, just as a 50-year-old Korean American dude from LA just doing his Ben Baller thing. Apparently the Baller Rex is uh, Rex is actually right. I think Rex was attempting to make a joke, but in his joking, he actually stumbled into the correct thing. Ben Baller, it's about Ben, and he is a baller. Well, he was a baller, Nancy. He played, uh, he played college hoops, I think. Uh, you know, so he's better than most. That he can, he can, uh... You can still show off some handles at a pickup game and, and surprise some people. Yeah, he's he's been around the block. I think he's I think he's worked as a music producer as well. I think I want to say he was discovered by Dr. Dre in the early '90s. So he's part of a scene. He's well known in the scene. 
and you know, and ended up doing this Tops collab, which I think is pretty cool too. Harry, what's going on? Here's Cabrian Hayes, 53 out of 99. Happy Sunday to you too. Um, Pirates, that's going to go to Steve Locke. So since I made a joke and it was legit, maybe I could make a make a big joke about the Cubs being 2023 World Series future champs and it'll happen. That's, that's a stretch. I, I know it's springtime when Rex talks about how the Cubs are going to be a playoff team. They got a chance to win the World Series. And then within a couple months. Oh, and then there'll be like a like an early season Cubs winning streak. You know, maybe four or five games in a row or something like that. Brandon Marsh is still Angel Edition. That's going to go to uh, Mark. Mark S. Really Castro for Detroit for Mark. And then it starts going downhill. And then uh, the team will win about 75 games. 78 games. And that'll be that. There's Austin Riley to 25. That's going to go to Ed. Here's a Wander Franco die cut. That's going to go to Daniel in Tampa Bay. Some of these can be numbered, too. We've seen some low-numbered ones of these, so let's keep an eye out for those. Harry saying Phillies. Lock it in now. There's Tyler Glass now to 99. That'll be for Tampa Bay also for uh, D'Lo. What I thought of Edwin Rios. Why do you care about Edwin Rios? Oh, the only reason why Rex would bring that up is because did the Cubs sign him? I think he might have been designated for assignment recently or something like that. There's a Wander Franco and there's an autograph. They don't these auto autos don't arrive in every box. But there's Jose Ramirez, nice one for D'Lo and the Tribe. Cleveland, this is for you. 25, a Tribe of Guardians. Here's a Wander Franco. Riding low. Insert. I think the Phillies are somewhat disrespected in, some, in terms of World Series odds, Harry. According to BetMGM, Phillies are currently plus 1,400. I mean, that's still seventh. That's still seventh best. If they were like 15th best, maybe that would be really disrespectful. But they got the Astros ahead of them. Astros, Yankees, Dodgers, Mets, Braves, Padres, then Phillies at 14 to 1. Oh, you don't know anything about him. Did you get? Did you pull a hit of Edwin Rios? It's just curious that you would bring up someone as random as Edwin Edwin Rios. Did you get his autograph in a break or something? Did you meet him? Oh, you said Cubs did sign him. Oh, I didn't. I didn't see that part. I was like, yeah. There's no reason why Rex would ever be asking about Evan Rios. Um, power hitting corner infielder, somewhat not very good at defense, which has kept him out of the lineups. And injuries, injury concerns have, injury issues have kept him out of the lineup as well. I think he had shoulder surgery about a season ago, and was just kind of ineffective last season. A lot of up, a lot of potential, a lot of big hit, you know, big home run potential, but just hasn't really been able to put a put a clean season together. So 
What's up, Trendsetter? What's going on? How are you? Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, though, Harry, you know, you can't... Astros are plus 650. They got to be. They're the reigning world champs. The Yankees, plus 650. That makes sense. Dodgers, Mets, plus 750. Braves are 10 to 1. Padres are 10 to 1. I feel like Phillies maybe should be closer to 10 to 1 instead of 14 to 1. But, but yeah. He's doing great, Trent Tedder. Living the life. The Mets are a joke. Well, I mean, you, as as a as your as your division rival, of course you would say that. But uh, you know, I think uh, I think um, the Mets that if if the if those uh. Scherzer, right, they look good on paper. Exactly, Rex. But if, like, Scherzer and Verlander, like, start looking old real quick, you know, that's going to be a problem. And they're going to wonder why they didn't hang on to Jacob deGrom. Although Jacob deGrom, I think, could have some injury issues as well. But I mean, let's just take a look at that depth chart. For the Mets, yeah, Scherzer, Verlander, uh, you know, Kodai Senya is a question mark, but Carlos Carrasco and Quintana at the back end, that's a pretty deep rotation if those top two guys, you know, can stay healthy. There's John Lester, Cardinals edition, I don't remember this, but there's Stephen Carney. I guess he spent some time with the Cardinals in 2021. You know, then they got they they still have they still have Edwin Diaz closing games over Omar Navarez, Francisco Alvarez in that catching spot, Pete Alonso, Jeff McNeil, Eduardo Escobar, Lindor, Mark Canna, Brandon Nemo. Chris Sale goes to uh, Stephen Carney and the Red Sox. Mets are in a fold faster than Superman on laundry day, says Harry. Am I going uh, to the first free training game with Jason? No, I think he's going on a day that I am working. Our schedules don't match up very nicely for for trips, I'm afraid. There's Shane Bieber, 78 out of 99. That's for Daniel and the Guardians. Got Blake Snell to 75 and Ryan Villad to 50. Snell going to Tristan and the Padres. And Ryan Villad going to uh, Chris in Colorado. Wait, who else did the? I feel like the Mets added someone else that I'm not seeing on this test chart.
Maybe it was maybe it was the big uh Maybe it was just the Verlander Verlander news? No. That's not a big signing. Bobby Bonilla had like a million dollars a season is like nothing. That's like barely more than vet minimum. Was I thought that I thought why, why am I blanking on? Did they add someone else? Maybe Quintana, Sanya? I guess they did pay Lindor last year. Anyway, that's the Mets. What does Harry's Phillies look like? I think they, the Phillies look pretty good too. I mean that that NL East. There's gonna be that. There's gonna be a lot of a lot of bad, even without the unbalanced. Even even with more of a balanced schedule, there's gonna be a lot of beating up on each other in that NL East. What do I think about proposed MLB reali realignment? Uh, is that even being discussed? I think we have to worry about. I think we have to worry about. Uh, Expand well. I think baseball is going to worry about the Oakland A's and Tampa Bay Rays stadium situation first, and possible moves, and or possible moves. If the stadium situation gets sorted out for both of those teams in their respective cities, then I think they can start looking at expansion. And then once we figure out the cities, when they get to 32, then we'll have to figure out what's going to happen. Uh, Uh, Realignment-wise, but that might not happen for like ten years. Right. Yeah, I think schedule-wise, it's going to look more like it's going to more look more like basketball. So instead of like. Interleague play being like this unique thing. You know, I think it's gonna it's gonna be more just, everyone's just gonna play everyone more often. But I don't think they'll actually realign until until they get to thirty two. And then they'll do more a more NFL style you know they'll still be A L N L like the AFC NFC and then the divisions will look a lot more like NFL divisions it's Anthony Rizzo to 50 but I know that like I think former Reds GM Bobby Bowden that's Matt Smith and the Yankees Bobby Bannon made up some like wacky realignment thing for the athletic, which which was kind of whatever. There's Hunter Green, twenty three out of fifty. They want to get rid of ALNL. Well, then how would they? How would the World Series work then? That's Hunter Green for the Reds. That'll be for Mark. Trevor Story, 54 out of 75. Are they going to do East-West? Is that how they're going to do it? Eastern Conference, Western Conference? And there's Julio Rodriguez die cut. Nice. Trevor Story goes, that's Rockies edition, by the way. That's still going to go to Chris and the Rockies. Yeah, I think, I think Grizzlebees is right. I think, well, first off, yes, I think that's the way that, that's the way the contract is set up. And I guess they haven't really agreed to, 
they haven't agreed to tear up the contract and do like some sort of buyout. But yeah, I think there's some like tax implications involved in both parties where it's where it's kind of I don't know. I mean, I mean, doesn't really matter. A million dollars is like a trend for the, especially for the new ownership and for the Mets in general, for any baseball team, it's like nothing. It's like such an insignificant amount. Julio Rodriguez to the Mariners, and then the Machado to 99 will go to the Padres, Tristan. Well, both of you, I think, are talking about that Bobby Bowden article that got a lot of run because it did split up the rivals. So you got to take that stuff with a grain of salt. That, and especially Bobby Bowden as a writer. That's three out of five, Kyle Lewis. I didn't realize that. Slightly thought that was the same copper color. Three out of five, Seattle. Kyle Lewis, Tristan, Mariners. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Whoop, whoop. Seems like they're doing way too many chains at once. Like what? <laughs> the bases got a little bigger. You can't throw to a runner. I mean, I don't think it's really that many changes. No shift, which everyone hated anyway. Pitch clock, which every minor leaguer's been using for like the last five or six years. I don't think it's really that much. Well, they're keeping the runner on second and extras. That's not like too many changes all at once. We've had that change for years, so we're used to it. Extra inning games uh, um, amount to what? How many percent of games throughout a season? It's not too many games are affected. And you know, the bases have already been bigger in some leagues in the minors too. And apparently, Rex, we were just talking about like how those could change stolen bases. Apparently, stolen bases numbers haven't changed that much with the size of the bases. And I think the shift... I, someone should do a deep dive on this. I don't know if the shift is even going to affect as many people as people think it would. Because that doesn't change, like, Joey Gallo's strikeout rate. A shift doesn't change Ryan Howard's strikeout rate, right? There's Aro Zerania to 99, Ruiz to 50. Keeper Ruiz goes to Cassandra, Randy Aro Zerania goes to Daniel. All right, I, uh, my guess is that by the end of the season, the shift is the the well the ban on the shift might actually have a bigger impact on on more different kind of players than we originally think. Right, like if, yeah, might actually Jeff McNeil's average might actually go down because he hits against the shift on purpose. So 
I think there's going to be a lot of, lot of those kind of stories. Keep an eye on fan graphs this season, I feel like. You know, they're, they'll, they'll probably have like some interesting analysis on that. There's Walker Bueller for Jorge and the Dodgers. That's to 25. And there's Javier Baez to 99 for Detroit. That'll be for Mark. Another box. Yeah, Rex just brought that up, Harry, and I. I we have a we have a work uh, work. We have a Slack channel, and there's a. We have a Slack, and there's a channel for big hits where we drop big hits into the channel that everyone can look at, and I just saw it. Pretty crazy. Looking at Harry's Phillies depth chart here. Aaron Nola, Zach Wheeler, Taiwan Walker, Ranger Suarez, Bailey Falter is currently what ESPN has. Is there is Andrew Painter going to be starting? Harry? I think he's a pitcher, right? Then they still have... Then I'm not too thrilled with... I don't, I don't know if you're going to like Craig Kimbrell in, the, in that closer spot. But that's what they have slotted in there as, as, a, uh, as your closer. But hopefully someone else will be closing. Oh, he's not closing. Oh, good. Yeah. You don't need, you don't need Mitch Williams 2.0. Uh, and then love JT Real Muto. Then there's Reese Hoskins. Bryson Stott, Alec Bohm, Trey Turner, obviously. Kyle Schwarber, Brandon Marsh, Nick Cassianos, and maybe some Derek Paul. <laughs> wild thing. I, I, I can mention... Well, no, I can't. One of, one of my buddies who's a big Phillies guy. Those are the two words that I cannot say to him. There's Luis Robert to 99. Chris Parent with the White Sox. There's Reed Detmers to 75 for Mark S. and the Angels. Here's Zach Lothar, 8 out of 10, and Hunter Green to 75 for the Reds. That's for Mark B. And the Orioles going to Glenn. Nice low number on this one, Glenn, out of 10. A 10, and out of 10 for Glenn. and Shohei Otani die cut and a Wander Franco rookie card. Let's see if we can find some numbered versions of this. But this will go to D'Lo and the Rays. Harry, tell me what this lineup is going to look like. We got Trey Turner leading off, I would imagine. And the, do you do like Kyle Schwarber then JT Real Muto? No, Kyle Schwarber. 
Wow, what do you do with that lineup? That's a really interesting... Especially when Bryce Harper... Yeah, I mean, you could bat Brandon Marsh lead off and have Trey Turner go second. No, Reese Hoskins is batting like five, six, seven, or eight. That's where I would put him. Because you could, that's nice, some nice pop at the bottom of the lineup. And you keep Schwarber a little bit higher. There's Cal Raleigh to 99. Or you can even have like Marsh 6, Hoskins 8. You can even put like Stott at nine or something like that. I mean, that's that bottom three which is, is pretty nice. And you got Trey Turner, Kyle Schorber, JT Real Muto, Bryce Harper, Alec Bohm. I've lost sleep over this. I have no idea. Yeah, it's pretty, I mean, it's a good problem to have, right? There's Julio Rodriguez, Ryden Low insert, Kyle Muller for the Braves, Ed P, that's to 50, and next box. Well, I suppose we can look up Let's quickly look at the Phillies baseball reference page 2022 And let's look up the most common batting orders. Let's see. So down the stretch, down the stretch, they had Schorber, Hoskins, Harper, and then Real Muto, Bohm, Marsh, Segura, Stott, Maiden as kind of a common sort of Yeah, so kind of August, September, we're looking at a lot of Schorber, Hoskins, Harper, Real Muto, top four, and then Bohm, five. That was the most common. Then Marsh-ish, Marsh or Stott in six. Six, seven, eight, nine were kind of, kind of varied. So I think you just stick... Trey Turner at the top of that lineup. And then everything just goes down a peg. You get Trey Turner leading off, Shorber batting second. Then you have Harper, Real Muto, Bohm, and then whoever else. Bohm, Hoskins, and whoever else. Or no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Trey Turner, Shorber, Hoskins, Harper, Real Muto, Bohm, and then everyone else. Marsh, and then everyone else. Hoskins was batting second a lot. I guess maybe you don't put him third at that point. Maybe he he go moves to the bottom of the lineup. Right, so you have a Trey Turner, Schwarber, Harper, Real Muto starting like four, which is kind of awesome. I mean, how many times... Is sure we're going to go up to bat with Trey Turner at second base? Single and a steal. Or a double or a triple. You know, like how often are you going to, how often are sure we're going to see that? It's a lot of, he's going to be eating a lot, Harry. He's going to be eating a lot of ribs. A lot of ribs. It's going to be feasting. Right, and then Harper, you know, obviously he has a, he has the skill to pretty much do anything as a hitter. And then you have Real Muto and Bohm, Marsh, or Castellanos or something like that, or Hoskins or whatever back like behind him.
Drew Ellis, one out of ten. A lot of ribs. Here's to 75, Jesus Lazardo. That's for Stephen Carney and the Marlins. And there's Jaron Duran Duran, 3 out of 25 for the Red Sox. Stephen Carney as well. I feel pretty good about the Dodgers this year. I think they're just going to need... We just need a little more clarity on some of these young, the younger hitters. I think there's a little more pressure on on Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman to continue being the hitters that they are. They're sunny great in 99. But I think they should be fine. You know, that I think Max Muncy and his like 25, 30 home runs, he should be healthy coming into the season. I think Chris Taylor is going to be healthy coming into the season. They were kind of off last year. That's Freddie Freeman right here. You know, Will Smith has developed into a great hitting catcher. Just have to see how Gavin Lux and Miguel Vargas in that infield work out. Just a 50 Adam Frazier. And if doubles machine J.D. Martinez, who's going to be in that DH spot mostly, if he can kind of rediscover some of that power that we know he can have, you know, that would be awesome. And then you got Kershaw, Julio Urias, Tony Gonsolin, Dustin May, Noah Syndergaard. It's a pretty solid staff with a lot of, you know, with a lot of, uh, with Ryan Pepio and Bobby Miller and other top, Gavin Stone, other top pitching prospects just waiting in the wings for the, you know, the inevitable injury or the place where you need like an extra starter in the schedule. Brandon Bell to 75. You know, I think a lot has been made of, well, the Dodgers didn't do anything and they lost everybody. So I've heard that comment before. It's like, everybody. I mean, I hate losing Tr Justin Turner, but... You know, it's not like he's getting, he's getting, he's not getting any younger. His voice in the locker room will be missed, but it's not getting any younger. And it's, it's you know, been battling some injuries here and there. I mean, it's not like Cody Bellinger was really doing anything. He's great, excellent in the outfield. I think that's something that's going to be missed a little bit. But his, his bat was kind of a, kind of missing throughout the season in the playoffs. It's not like we're really going to miss him. Trey Turner, obviously, is going to be is going to be a miss. But I don't. Th I think he always wanted to go back to the East Coast in the first place. So, you know, what are you going to do? He took a chance there. I think it's going to be Miguel Vargas or Max Muncy at third. Maybe, uh, or Max Muncy at second, Miguel Vargas at third, or... ESPN has Miguel Vargas at second, which is interesting. <laughs> yeah. 2023, simply the season before Otani goes to the Dodgers. That's the rumor. Because I don't I don't think I don't think the Angels would ever trade Otani to the Dodgers in the middle of the season, let's say if the Angels are just looking terrible. I don't think the Angels are going to get an extension with Otani. So I think the Dodgers are just going to... The crazy thing is the Dodgers could still win with this lineup. I mean, 111 games last year. And even with the sort of quiet off season they've had, they're still projected, at least by Vegas anyway, when like 96, 97 games. I don't think the Dodgers are going to win 100 games this season, but I think they've got an excellent shot to still 
to still win the division and do some damage in the playoffs. And they're a team that will certainly be active during the, uh, during the trade deadline as well. Here's another uh, Ryden Low rookie card, Julio Rodriguez. These cards look pretty sharp, actually. I think these look really cool. Looks like uh, looks like Rodeo maybe in Beverly Hills. It's Kristen Yelich to twenty five. But yeah, I think a lot hinges upon some of the youngsters here, and you know, the Dodgers have had a top five if not top farm system for the last, like, what, almost 10 years? Or ever since the new ownership came on board. Soon after that. I don't know. A lot of times they've tended to, to trade away some of those prospects. But maybe it's time to kind of hang on to some of them, see what, see what we got. There's Ozzy Albies. Like the Braves, with Albies and Acuna and Austin Riley and Michael Harris and Tristan McKenzie to 99 for Cleveland, D'Lo. And then they were able to get the kids in Atlanta to buy in. Here's just Shremsky to 50, get him to buy in and sign those like pretty team-friendly but long-term deals. Otani after that's does Otani get traded? Does anyone think Otani will actually get traded in the middle of the season? I know the Dodgers still want to get under the luxury tax too. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if they make a trade in the middle of the season to get a little under the luxury tax to reset that. They get a lot of money coming off coming off the books. And then I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna go after Otani. And if not, if that doesn't work, and I think in 2024, they're after after that season, they're gonna go after Juan Soto, who should be an unrestricted free agent by then. What is the highest that any one team has gone over the luxury tax? I think that would be the New York Mets. Their projected payroll is currently $345 million. The second closest are the Padres at two, no, the Yankees at 270, then the Padres at 250. And I think the luxury tax is at three I don't know, if you're a max offender, I think it's like two ninety something maybe. Anyway, they're well over. All right, and then 300 is the Cohen tax level where, where it's almost like, I mean, what is that, 50%, I think? Something crazy like that. But yeah, there's like a number of different, different tiers, and then multi-time offenders will get charged more. And other offenders, and then, but if you're one for only one season, if you're under the luxury tax threshold just once, it resets the multiple time offender thing, which is what the Dodgers are trying to do. Oh, 
Was it like, is it more like 62%? <laughs> yeah, the only blue Otani's gonna wear is Chicago blue, says Rex. I highly doubt that. I mean, Otani has repeatedly said that he wants to be on a playoff team. And even with Mike Trout, the 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 Cubs, the Angels just have name. I mean, the Angels and Cubs might as well, may as well be like the same team. There's Hyunjin Ru for Toronto, D'Lo, to fifteen. It's Jackson Coward, ninety nine. Tatis Junior die cut. Ronald Acuna Jr. to 50. I don't think the uh, I don't think the Cubs will be in the running for for Shohei Otani. Braves die cut goes to Ed. There's a Wander Franco. Man, that Cohen tag is it's crazy. 60, 80, 90, 110. Based on the internet, Mike saying the based on the system, the Dodgers, not the Mets, were hit with the highest tax rate of 2022. Right, I think it was the Dodgers at 2022, but 2023, I think the Dodgers or the Mets are just gonna go way over. It's Drew Ellis to 75 and a Torkelson to 99. Nice die cut, numbered die cut for the uh, Tigers, Mark B. There you go, Mark. Although, speaking of Otani, it's entirely possible that he just changes his mind and says, you know what, I don't care about winning, I care about money. And if the Cubs just go bananas and just offer him a $500 million contract, that might do it. Is Rafael Devers to 50? Right, Mets will offer him five hundred million tomorrow if they could. That's true. Yeah, they gave they almost gave Carlos Correa a boatload of money, and he has to he has to hop over it first. I mean, I think he, I think he's fine. Like now, Grizzle Bees. I don't think he has to hop to first just yet. But I think they're concerned that in three or four years, with the uh, degenerative leg condition that he allegedly has, that he might have to start hopping to first down the line. They don't want that. Yeah, what's crazy is that in 2024, the Dodgers, the Dodgers payroll, the only people that have, they only have $75 million under contract at, after the end of the 2023 season. Now they're definitely going to have to re-sign some guys. They, there's an option for Max Muncy. They'll probably re-sign Julio Urias. You know, they've got some arbitration stuff to take care of for some other guys and blah, 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 blah. But yeah, they're, they're opening the door for, for Otani for sure. Yeah, I mean, 
I had a feeling. I think I think the Dodgers organization, a lot of fans knew that that probably that the Dodgers probably would be on the hook for for some of that Bauer money. But he's going to be off the books in 2023. So yeah, I mean. I think even without Bauer, I don't. I don't think that that the that the Dodgers would have been as aggressive in free agency. Because I think, just like a lot of clubs, they're waiting for Shohei Otani at the end of the 2023 season. I guess the big question is if Otani will actually get traded. A smart thing for the Angels to do. But the thing is, I don't know if. Uh, You know, I, I think fans will will hate the GM that trades him and the ownership that trades him forever. But can you can you add, can you let him walk for nothing? Or is it better to save face if you're the Angels? Better to save face and be like, listen, we we offered him four hundred fifty million dollars, and another team offered four hundred ninety million dollars. What were we supposed to do? We can't. We just can't, just can't go that high. He chose someone else. I guess it would be the better way to save face. There's Harrison Bader to 75 for the Cardinals. It's going to go to Stephen Carney in the Cardinals. There's Julio Rodriguez. This one's numbered to 99. I saw a little bit of color here, and I was like, that might be a parallel. So that's the, that's the ride and low insert. 86 out of 99. Mariners, Tristan, the Mariners. And remember, this is not a uh, it's not a product that really focuses on autographs. So it's like those parallels like that have uh, have the potential for for a lot of uh, for a lot of return if you're into that sort of thing. Judging from the way people have been purchasing personal boxes of this on our Instagram channel at Jaspie's Breaks, Delo with that one. That, that tells me that. People like what they're what they're getting out of here. It's a good sign. There's a Dallas Garcia for the Rangers. It's going to be for D'Lo to 25. Got Andre Jackson to 75, and another guy, if he keeps the walks down, I think his walks number are a little high. 20 and 63 innings, that's kind of a lot. I guess he kind of started shaving some walks. If he could shave the walks down, his K numbers are pretty, strikeout numbers are pretty good. That one, uh, Jorge with the Dodgers, and 61 out of 99, Carlos Santana for the Royals. That'll be for Mark B. And the Aaron Judge goes to Matt Smith and the Yankees. It's 29 out of 50. All right, three more boxes to go. I mean, even if the Dodgers kind of avoided arbitration and extended some free agents and stuff like that, I mean, they would still be... I mean, they, they, can, they can afford to pay Otani $50 million over the next 10 years. And still keep developing their... Uh, and still keep developing their... Their whatchamacallit, their uh, prospect, their youngsters. So, for some way too early conversation about next year's free agents, 2024 free agents, the following players have expiring contracts or should have the six years of service necessary to become free agents after the 2023 World Series. Players whose contracts include a 2024 option or a right to opt out in 2024 are noted with asterisks. So, first baseman, G-Man Choi, Garrett Cooper, C.J. Crone. Reese Hoskins is going to be a free agent. 
think Darren Ruff and Joey Votto may have some opt-outs or something like some options. Second base, Tony Kemp, Tommy LaStella, Scope, and Colton Wong. The shortstop market was pretty much snapped up snapped up uh, this past off season. But Manny Machado all but saying that he's going to opt out. So he's going to be available. Did they, did they lock up Rafael Devers? They still have him listed as a free agent. Tim Anderson has an option. Javier Baez has an option. Nothing too crazy in the... Yeah, Devers is locked out, right? Nothing too crazy in the catchers thing. Carantini, Garver, Grandal, Martin Maldonado. Nothing too crazy there. Outfielders. Nothing too crazy that, aside from Otani. Starting pitch. Hugh Darvish is a free agent. Jack Flaherty, free agent. Sonny, Sonny Gray's a free agent. If only he could stay healthy. But Aaron Noll is a free agent, but it sounded like he was that ex an extension is being worked on with the Phillies. He should be locked. He should be a Philly for a long time. Oh, was Darvish extended the other day? What about Blake Snell? Blake Snell's on this free agent list too. Yeah, I guess I guess Otani and probably Manny Machado are going to be the big fish of the free agent class at the end of this season. Yeah, Grizzly will be saying Mets are using Dodgers as a blueprint. Yeah, buy buy free agents and Soto, right? Machado, Otani in twenty twenty four. Actually, Soto is 2025, technically. At the end of 2023, it would be Otani and Machado. It's the end of 2024, going into 2025, I think it's Soto. I think the Padres ended up figuring out, like, a avoided arbitration, knocked out a one-year deal. Here's Max Muncy to 15. He has an option at the end of this season. Would Merrifield to 75? When does Corbin Burns go? Um, I think he directs, I think he actually has one more year of arbitration. I'm, I'm assuming he's not very happy about that. Yeah, so 2023... There was the contentious arbitration case. He has one more year of arbitration, so he has to go through that process one more time. Unless he, I guess he can demand a trade. So I guess it just depends on if he's that kind of guy. Look at this Julio Rodriguez to five. Two out of five Julio Rodriguez in that 1987 design. That goes to Tristan and the Mariners. That's hot. Feeling hot, hot, hot. And all aboard the Big Hit Express. Whoop, whoop. Nice one to have leading into the baseball season. We'll do a, we'll do a recap at the end. We'll show you all of the... The fun parallels of the top players that we've pulled. If we're lucky, we might get another autograph out of here, too. And a Julio Rodriguez die cut to 75. That's sharp. Is Rex watching on a potato again? Rex, 
Are you watching YouTube on a potato? Is anyone else having trouble? No. Grizzlebee says no. Never mind, says Rex. All right, all right. Back on a real phone now. Non potato, non potato. Bobby Wood Jr. goes to Mark B. There's J.D. Martinez, current Dodger. This is a Red Sox edition, Stephen Carney. And a Bobby Wood Jr. die cut. For Mark and the uh, Royals. Mark B and the Royals. There's a Mark... He spelled it the same, too. Mark with a C. There's a Mark S. There's a Mark B. Yeah, not many. We found, we saw one already, uh, Mark, and then one to two, three sometimes. Well, we've only seen one so far. And that was early on in this case. So see, we still got a shot. Two more boxes left. Oh, Rex, I think your feed may have cut out. I don't know if you heard me answer your question, but Corbin Burns actually, Rex was saying earlier, where does Corbin Burns go? I can't see him staying. Well, it kind of, he kind of has to stay because as collectively bargained, he has to go through that arbitration process and he has to accept what the arbitrator says. Um, that being said, if he's the kind of guy that would that would demand a trade, and that's that's... He could do that, I suppose, but he has one more year of this process. So after this year, he has to uh, he has to uh, go through the arbitration process once more. I think you are Taz. You're Mark S, right? You have Astros Angels here in Figure Team Five. And I'll do a recap, Mark. I, I want to say, I don't know if we saw a lot of, I think there might have been a, I don't know. we'll do a recap, we'll find out, I don't, I don't remember. All right, second to last box. Good luck. Josh Hader to 50. Teoscar Hernandez to 75. That is Toronto edition going to D'Lo. Hater Aid is Brewers edition going to Chris Parent. Here's Hunter Green, die cut to 75. Reds, Mark Bissett. Yeah, after you can't imagine he'd want to re-sign with him. I mean, after one more year of arbitration. Yeah, it's probably. Unless, of course, the Brewers are like, hey, we were wrong. You deserve all this money. Here's a big payday. And then Corbin Burns would be like, yeah, thanks. There's Matt Verling to 99 and a Bobby Witt Jr. riding low. 
insert for Mark B in the Royals. Kroger playing, playing Olivia Newton-John. Magic, huh? R.I.P. Olivia Newton-John. Steven Strasburg to 15 for Cassandra and the Nationals. Got a Wander Franco. D'Lo and the Rays with Wander. I wonder, wonder, ooh, 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 who wrote the book of love? There's an even older one for you. I don't know who sang that song. The Letterman, maybe? Alright, final box. We made it. Got the Brewers Cots contracts page up. The only guy they really they really have under contract is, is Christian Yelich at 26 million a year. Think someone trade for Christian Yelich? Think, think Christian Yelich bounces back? When does he bounce back? Will he bounce back? I, mean, they, I feel like they've been. I mean, they got rid of Hater last year. I feel like they they may as well just move Christian Yelich for whatever they can. I mean, he had a 2-7 war last year, which is not bad. He played 154 games, so he was healthy. But 252, 14 homers, 57 RBIs, 19 stolen bases. The highest strikeout numbers he's had in an entire full career, too. That's right. Now that's Michael Jaspi. Definitely better looking than Christian Yelich, Chris Lopez. I don't know what you're. Uh, I don't know what you're seeing. Maybe. Uh, maybe check your uh, check your phone monitor, check your TV screen or something. I need to get that cleaned up. You must be watching on a potato, yeah. You must be watching on a potato. Doesn't Vegas have, and others have Brewers winning the division? I don't think so. They probably have... I mean, they probably have um, the Cardinals winning that division. Yeah, Cardinals have the best win total, according to Vegas, at 88 and a half wins. Milwaukee is second at 86 and a half wins. We'll probably take the under on that. And then, um, and then it drops about 10 games to the Cubs, 76 and a half, then drop about another nine games or so to the uh, Pirates at 70, 67 and a half wins, and Cincinnati at 65 and a half wins. Mark S. and the Angels with Brandon Marsh to 50. Yeah, Cardinals would be the favorites. 
And there's Kyle Tucker for Mark S. and the Astros to 99. Jake Myers from Mark S. and the Astros. Jose Ramirez to 50 for Cleveland. That is Daniel with the Guardians. Yeah, I think, uh, I feel like 86 wins feels generous for the Brewers. There's Jaron Duran to 75. Rex is saying, you know, how interesting it would be how Wilson Contreras replaces Molina. Well, I can tell you right now that Wilson Contreras is not as good of a fielder as as uh, Molina, as Yachty. But Wilson Contreras, there he is right here, probably uh, hits a little better than, than Yachty, so. Now how that, how that bound, there, there are numbers that will measure that, but how that balances out by the end of the season, that'll be the, that'll be the interesting question. So, different kind of player, you know? So it'll be a, a different wrinkle in that, uh, in that Cardinals organization. They'll probably win like 90 games. I, I might take the over on that. Here's a quick little uh, recap on what we got here. Julio Rodriguez to 75, Julio Rodriguez to 99. Some Wanders, that Torkelson die cut was to 99. And the nice one here at the end, we got that one autograph, is the Julio Rodriguez to five, two out of five. That's the kind of stuff we're looking for in this Ben Baller stuff. The autos are few and far between, but these parallels, that's, that's, where, that's where the money's at. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. We've got another case of this in the store. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. And I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.